This is the first of a series of tutorials we intend to record on tuning SQL. In this one, just the introductory tutorial, we aren't actually going to do any tuning. This is just to make sure that we all have the correct pre prerequisite knowledge to enable us to tune SQL. That prerequisite knowledge is the ability to understand what Oracle is actually doing with our code. To understand what Oracle is doing, we need to look at the execution plans for the problem SQL statements. So, I intend to go through techniques for generating execution plans, how to read an execution plan, and then certain suspicious structures that we should look for in an execution plan. Certain operations that may be good, may be bad, but certainly operations that one should investigate to see if they really are being done in the correct way. Why do you need to look at execution plans at all? It's because they are a vital part of your tuning methodology. There is no automatic way to tune SQL. If there were, Oracle would do it for us. Of course there are tools that may help. There are certain wizards provided by Oracle and also by third-party companies. We've got the SQL Tuning Advisor, we have the SQL Access Advisor, but if these wizards could do the job we wouldn't need to tune SQL at all. But they can't do it for us. All they do is apply general principles to particular problems. It may help, but it's never going to solve the problem completely. My own experience is that the various wizards very rarely give advice that is definitively wrong, but they will usually give advice that could be improved upon. So the approach I take is that if a client has the licenses, Sure, run the tools, but don't just blindly do what they say. Look at the advice they're giving, work out why they're giving it, and you will usually find you can do a much better job with the extra knowledge that they've provided. They can't do the job for you, you have to do the work. And that means you have to develop a tuning methodology. The methodology I follow, four simple steps. First, identify the problem SQL. And that is SQL that is a problem in business terms. It means Maybe the batch jobs that should run overnight but don't finish till lunchtime. A screen that takes 30 seconds to refresh and the user needs it refreshed in one second. A report that takes five hours to run and you need it in 10 minutes. Find out the problem SQL. Having identified the SQL, work out what Oracle is doing to it. What is the cost-based optimizer doing? How is it executing that SQL? When we can see what the cost-based optimizer is doing, we then need to work out why the cost-based optimizer is doing it that way. Then the final step, if you think that the cost-based optimizer is perhaps not making the best decisions, you push the optimizer to make a different decision, to run the code in a different and better way. Execution plans are a vital part of this process. They will tell us what happened and will give us a lot of information to work out why it happened that way. There are three commonly used techniques for generating execution plans, and I'll go through them all. First, the use of explain plan. This does a hard pause, but it doesn't actually execute the statement. So the plan it generates may not be the one that would actually be used. Then there is SQL plus auto trace that does execute the statement, and then runs explain plan against it and it shows you some execution statistics. And for the whole truth, we need to either use DBMS XPlan Display Cursor to look at information in the library cache stored within the cursor, or we need to enable SQL Trace and analyze the full detail of information gathered during runtime. Now that we've had a look at the theory, let's actually do it. Let's generate and read an execution plan. I'm going to work in the Scott schema, the Scott demonstration schema, and this is just an absolutely normal release 12.1 database. Explain plan first. I'll run the explain plan command. Explain plan for select ename dname from amp natural join doubt. It's been explained. How do I show the plan? The easiest way is undoubtedly to use the DBMS XPlan display function, which returns table. Select star from table, DBMS XPlan dot display. And I'm relying totally on defaults. There are a number of arguments you can put through. And this shows me 
The execution plan that was developed, remember, explain plans are hard pass, but doesn't do anything else. The plan that it's come out with is this. How do we read a plan? Start at the top. Every one operation may or may not have child operations. A child operation is beneath and indented. So this tells me that the select statement, operation ID 0, has one child operation. This nested loop, ID number 1. The nested loop has two child operations. How do I know that? Because there are two operations beneath it at the same level of indentation. The first child operation is this nested loop. The second child operation is that nested loop. So both 2 and 5 are child operations of 1. Operation 2 itself has two child operations. It has table access full and index unique scan, operations 3 and 4. The same level of indentation, therefore both child operations of this. This is the first operation to start. Hang on to that fact. The first operation is the first operation that has no child. And that is the first operation that has no child. So when we run this statement, we'll begin with a full scan of emp. Full scan of emp. The second operation is the second child of this same nested loop, which is index unique scan. So to run this statement, we'll scan emp, and as we scan emp, we'll be doing index lookups into PK depths. When we've completed those two, the scan of emp and the index lookup, we've implemented operation two, the nested loop. So the two child operations implement the parent. What happens after that? Well, we've got another nested loop up here. The nested loop at one had two child operations, this and this. So as we complete the nested loop here, we can begin to do this as well. We can do the table access into depth to retrieve the row. Having done that, we've implemented that nested loop, which implemented the select statement. So the order in which these operations start, it is operation 3, operation 4, which implements 2. Then operation 5 will start, which will complete the implementation of 1, which implements 0. So in this particular plan, it's a full scan of AMP, unique scan of PK depth, table lookup into depth. But is this the truth? Is this what would actually happen? There are two things to consider. This column of rows, this is estimated cardinality. Oracle thinks that that full scan of AMP will return one row. Will it return one row? I don't know. We'll find out. Furthermore, is the actual plan that one would be used? That too is open to debate. Explained plan is only a prediction, a predicted plan and predicted cardinalities. And that moves us on to the next technique, which is to use the auto trace facility. Very useful, very useful indeed. To use it, set auto trace on. There are some other options. And now I'll actually run the statement. So run the statement, select ename, dname, from emp, natural join, depth. And back come 14 rows. Now, what about the truth? Well, we've got the same execution plan and the same predicted rows. So now we do know already that the estimated cardinalities were wrong. But what is correct, of course, is the statistics down here. That statement did do 15 consistent gets. So this is giving us a certain amount of useful information. It's telling us, of course, exactly what was returned, so we know that's wrong. And it's telling us how much I.O. was involved. But it still isn't necessarily telling us that this plan was the plan that was used. To determine the full truth, we need to take things a step further. First I shall disable autotrace. Now, I need to run the statement again, but this time with a hint. So I'm going to run the statement like this. I'm including the hint, gather plan statistics. That instructs Oracle to gather detailed information about how the statement really was run. So I'll run it. Back come the 14 rows. How do I now get the full information out? Another function call, dbmsx plan display cursor. This is going to go to the library cache of the shared pool and pull out 
format, all stats last, all possible information about the last statement I ran. There are a few other options you can give it, but in summary, this is going to tell me all it's got to know about this statement. And what does it tell me? Very interesting indeed. It tells me the plan was in fact a hash join. So what Oracle actually did, it did not do a nested loop, starting with a full scan of AMP, then index lookups. It chose a totally different plan. So to read this plan, what did it do? That has one child, which is that. The hash join has two children, operations two and three. So the first thing that happened is the first operation with no child, which is operation ID2, full scan of AMP. Oracle scanned AMP, read the table into memory, and now we see more interesting information. It did that once, starts once, it expected one row, it actually got 14 rows. Estimated rows, actual rows. So Oracle expected one row, it got 14. It read those 14 rows into memory, then did a scan of depth. A hash join, you read one set into memory, and then pass through the second row set, probing the first set. It expected one row there, it got four. And this is the full truth. So we've determined the explain plan was basically lying. Explain plan said that it would use a nested loop, returning one row. In fact, Oracle decided to use a hash join and it returned 14 rows. This is very good information, but it still isn't the full story. This is not telling us about the disk and memory I.O. To get that information, we need to enable SQL Trace. And with that, I come to the end of our first segment of this series of lectures. In later segments, we'll be looking at using SQL Trace to give us the whole truth, exactly what happened and why it happened that way. Then we'll move on to the critical decisions. Most important being join order. In what sequence should you join your tables? If there's any such thing as a silver bullet in SQL tuning, it's getting the join order right. Having determined the join order, we'll look at the method for implementing those joins. Having determined the join method, we'll look at the access method, how we're getting to the actual data. Then, in another segment, we'll be looking at the common errors, what I call the red flags. These are SQL's constructs that may be good, may be bad, but are often used inappropriately. And finally, how do we make the cost-based optimizer do its job better? How do we push it towards better decisions? And that is all there is to SQL tuning.